people. So in the previous video, we were able to consume our Rails API object, the JSON object that was produced by Rails. We were able to consume that in our Angular 2 application. So we've been able to successfully list out the list of posts which was supplied by Rails. And now in this video, we're going to be working on routes and uh, having this post to show using their ID on their own page, uh, on their own pages. So say for example, this post has an ID of one, we need to be able to uh, click on this post and have it show on its own page. That way, in future videos, we'll be able to work on maybe commenting on each of these posts and also editing each of these posts. So let's work on um, the show action of this post now in this video. So the first thing we need to do is to open both of our applications in Sublime Test. I've decided to put both of them in one single workspace for easier navigation. So now we navigate into the Rails API project folder in the app and inside the controller, we create a show action for our posts. First, we create a show method and then render the post. Then we create a private method to set the post. The name of the method will be called setPost. What this does is it queries the database with the ID of each particular post when it is clicked or needed. So the next thing we do is set a before action filter, which ensures that a post is set before an action in the controller is initialized. In our case, the show action. Now that we're done with the show action, let us close out of the API application and go back to our Angular application. We'll go into the post service, the, the TS file, and create a function to place a call to the show action on the Rails application. We'll use the ID of each post to place a call to a particular post. Once the get post function is created, we'll create a new file. Let's name it post show component. This is where we're going to be using the guest post function that we just created in the post service. And just like any other component in an Angular 2 application, we're going to need some inputs. So let's copy that from our post list component that we created before. We're going to import one more library from the Angular call folder. It is called input. An input is a decorator used inside of a child component that allows data to flow from parent component to child component. The next library we import from the Angular router folder is the activated route and params. Activated route contains the information about the route associated with a component loaded in an outlet, while the params is an observable of the matrix parameters scoped to this route. So once all the import is done, we create a component decorator, export the class with the name post show component, and implement the on init method. And also with the selector of post show, and we initialize the ng on init, declare an ID variable for our post ID and the route ID, and create a constructor for the HTTP model, the routes, and the post service. And now we'll go to the post folder and create a new file. Let's name it postshow.component.html. We'll close out of that for now and come back to it later. Whenever we create a new component, we need to import it in the app model.ts file. 
So now we'll go into the app.model.ts file and input the post show component that we just created and add it as part of the declarations of our application. Once that is done, we save our update, close out of that file and go into the app routing model to activate the route for the post show component. We also need to import the post show component, so let's just go ahead and copy it from the app.model.ts file. After the post show component is imported, we save that file, close out, and then go back to the ng on init model to finish up the initialization. Inside the ng on init lifecycle hook, we use the params observable to extract the ID parameter value from the activated route service and use the post service to fetch the post with that ID. The post ID is a number. Route parameters are always strings. So we convert the route parameter value to a number with the JavaScript plus operator. We also need to get each post from the post service. So we're going to use the method that we created earlier, the get post, and we'll get all this post and save it in this variable called post request. And now is the perfect time to use the input decorator. You remember we imported that earlier from the Angular core library. Whenever a nested component wants to receive input from its component, it must expose a property nest to, the, to an input decorator. And this exposed property then gets bind to a value in the parent component. The parent component in this situation is going to be the post list component. Now we need to navigate into the post list component file. We create a function, we name it go to show, and pass in a parameter of post, which we will then use to navigate to the post page. The go to show method navigates to post page, then we wire this method with an event binding to the post list using the HTML anchor tag. We also need to import the router module from the router library and also declare it as part of the constructor. Now that is done. Let's navigate to the post list component.html file. We cut this all out and put it in an anchor tag. Inside the anchor tag, we're going to use the go to show function and bind it to a click event. And now we can paste the template from before into our anchor tag. And now when we click on the post, in the post list page, it should take us to the particular page of that post. So let's test this out by creating the template in the post show component.html file. As a sample, we'll just show the ID of every post and the title. So let's go ahead and test it out in the browser. So we refresh the browser and we click on any post. It should navigate to the particular post page. But it doesn't work. Let's go back and check what's wrong. And when you check your test files and you see that everything is right, the next thing to do is to go back to the terminal and check the error. We have checked the error and we found out that the name of the CSS file is wrong. It cannot find the post.css file. And now as you can see, the right name of the CSS file is post.component.css, not post.css. So let's go ahead and change the name in the post show.component.ts file. Now let's save and navigate back to the browser. Everything should work correctly now. So when we click on the post now, it should take us to the page of the post. And that's it for this video. If everything works right on your side, it should work exactly the same way. In the next video, we're going to work on creating new posts using Angular forms. We're going to try out template driven, driven forms and reactive driven forms. Everything is going to work right. And we're going to create a post from the Angular front end and save it in the Rails API. So see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel and bye.